So this morning I was reading on Medium, the blog site, which I really enjoy. And it's not often that I come across a code example that is just so incredibly hard to understand that after multiple tries I still can't get it. Because today, today was one of those days. What I was reading about was functional programming. There is this thing in functional programming called composition. And it's basically that you create these neat little functions that you can compose together in order to achieve some result. When you do these compositions, it's often that your functions return other functions. And then the example became even harder. It was a function called compose that took in an array of other functions and ran them back to back and accumulated the value and the syntax is just insane to me we should have a look let's run this code and let's try to figure it out <music> let's have a look at the insanity code but in the beginning at least we have some more simple functions like lowercase takes in a string returns a string also uppercase we like it's also very simple replace takes in an old word and a fresh word and this one actually returns another function and that function takes in a string. This should be a constant. So a new regex is created here. Ah, and it's, ma it's matching the old word. And then we can do string.replace and pass in the regex matching the old word and replace it with the fresh word. So this replaced string is being returned from the function that is being returned. You see? This is, this is where we're going with this video. We have another simple function, count words. We split the words by spaces and then we just return the length. And now we have the insanity function, the nightmare function. The function that has made me feel bad all day because it's so hard to understand. From this spread here, we can understand that we are actually being passed an array of functions. It's also a bit of a tell that it's called compose. Compose is a function that returns this function and that inner function returns a reduce call on the passed in functions. Uh, so the accumulator will be whatever you send into the function that you get back from compose. Oh, it's so hard to, to speak right in this context. So accumulator and the given function that we're on at the moment and what we return from the reduce every time is a function call to that active function and we pass in the accumulator. So, the way I understand this now, is that the string, the first initial string that we get in, is this x here. It's also the initial value of the accumulator. And then we can do different transforms on this string. And after each transform, the string is being passed to the next function. This count words function would not be able to be used except from when it's the last function because it doesn't return a string it returns a number replace returns a string uppercase returns a string and lowercase returns a string in our examples we need to make sure that if we're going to count the words we have to use that as the last function that is being passed into compose 
Okay, so here we have a test string that we're gonna try out this compose function with. Uh, and it's the quick brown fox uppercase jumps over the lazy dog. It's a well known phrase. So let's start with the first function. And we already know that compose will return a function, so we need to call that function something. In this case, I'm gonna call it uppercaser because the only function that we pass into compose is uppercase. So let's comment these other ones out so we know what we're looking at. We create our uppercaser function. We're not actually composing because we're just using one function, but we want to make sure it works even with one function. So we console log when we use uppercaser and we pass in our test string. And it does look correct. We do get an uppercase string back. But that's not such a fun example, is it? So let's go to the next one. Our complementer function. First one is take the string and make it lowercase. Then we replace the word lazy with upmost beautiful. And there now we understand why we call it complementer, right? And that's all it does. So it's two functions and they are being composed and run after each other. So let's see what complementer actually returns. So it's lowercase, which is correct, and the quick brown fox jumped over the utmost beautiful dog. So nice. Complementer seems to work fine. We'll do our counter. So here we just make it lowercase, we count the words. We have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine because it separates them by the spaces, remember? And now, yeah, we can keep both of these actually, because what we do in the replacer counter is that we we convert it to lowercase, we, place, uh, we replace fox with flamingo bird, and then we count the words. So what should happen is that we get an extra word, because we add the bird. So we should have 10. Yeah, that, that is also very nice. So, what can we learn from this? Well, I think it's pretty cool to have reusable functions. And the only odd, odd one out here is the count words, because that is the only one that doesn't return a string. So, that is the only one that doesn't work so good, because if I were to do like an uppercase as the last one. That should not work because count words returns um, a number. But I think that uh, we can gain a lot by by working this way. Uh, we compose functions together. We like force ourselves to write very reusable functions. And I do think it's kind of cool. And a lot of the times there are uh, frameworks for functional programming that will give you functions like this compose function. Uh, so you don't have to like understand the syntax of these functions because to me, even as a somewhat experienced programmer, it looks super hard to understand. It's, it becomes like too nested. So it, it's really hard to wrap your head around it and it's t like too many things to keep track of in your head. But as a concept I think it's super cool and super usable. You know in like in like C sharp and Java and stuff it's it's a lot about inheritance but since we are able to pass around functions as the parameters in JavaScript we are able to do these things and I think it's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool to have this have your program in small little chunks and being being able to compose them into into new functions. So I hope it was not super confusing. I hope you learned something. If you do like this content, I would be happy to have you as a subscriber to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.